Welcome back friends. Now that we have created the lists for the menu items and their prices, also we have learned about indexing lists in Python. We are in a position to display the items that are available in our online store to the user. Now, before I get on with this, let me first show you what I mean by this. Basically, what we mean is that we want to display, you know, we have welcomed our user and we have created these lists, which are the menu and the price. Now we want to display those items in a way that the user can kind of, you know, relate to this. So for example, here we are saying, okay, look, uh, these are the th things available for you. Item one is the milkshake, two is ice cream, whose price is 120.99 INR excluding tax. Say four is eclairs, whose price is 37.99 excluding tax and so on. So this is what I mean. And in this video, we are going to see how do we create, let's say this kind of a nice table which is, you know, uh, kind of understandable to the user and then the user, user can then start interacting with this. Now, again, before we start to code, let us first try to understand some of the challenges that we have to deal with here. Number one, you remember that we have this list menu uh, where we had items like milkshake, ice cream, chocolate, eclairs and cupcake. Unfortunately, these items are of different lengths and not, I mean, what I mean by this is that the number of characters, for example, in milkshake is... Uh, say nine but in cupcake i have only seven characters now this is quite easy to fix and why do we need to fix it because we want to nicely format these you know prints so we want to fix this but it's actually quite easy to fix because all we have to do is to make all the names equal length so i'll do it right away uh, in my project so you know i'm going to go to this project that i've been developing notice here all i really have to do in fact this is nine letters this is nine letters including the space this is nine letters. However, this is right now, I think eight letters. I'm going to give two spaces, one, two, and also for here, cupcake, I'm also going to give two spaces. Now this doesn't change anything with respect to the uh, in overall structure of the project, but those, if I now look at menu, for example, notice my chocolate, I mean, my eclairs and cupcake have these extra spaces. Now this will help me, help us rather later on when we print these items. So first challenge is quite easy to fix and we have fixed that. Next challenge is that how do we get, for example, say this one dot milkshake, two dot ice cream and so on to display on screen. Now this is a little bit more involved. So we'll pick this up a little later, but let's look at the next two challenges. Third challenge really is that how do I make these display nicely formatted? So here it looks quite nice. You know, all the items are in one row, then there's a gap and then all these prices are again in one row. Now this we will see later can be done by using a proper set value in the print statement because finally we are using a print statement here by uh, adjusting the set we can get a pretty good display here. Uh, depending on the items you have on the menu and depending on the kind of text you want to put here you may have to play around a little bit with this but certainly using set we can fix this and we will see this later. Finally how do I get these different prices coming out? Well that is really to list indexing because like we see like you've seen before when we arrange the two lists side by side really there's a strong correspondence so basically item zero of price is the price of the item zero of menu and so on and so forth so we are going to make use of this property uh, so everything else will fall in place but let us spend some time on how do we get things like say one dot milkshake two dot ice cream and so on to display on screen now this is really not very hard if we just go in a step by step manner and again fall back to scratch because I think that is a good thing that always helps us. Now remember the is we are looking at the challenge number two here. So we really need to join three strings together. For example, I could join say one, a dot and say milkshake. Now I could do this a bit like join apple banana remember joins these two strings in scratch so if I did join dot milkshake. It's going to give me dot milkshake and if I did join one and join dot milkshake, it's going to do one dot milkshake. Now, just to extend this a little bit, because this is what we are going to use later. Remember milkshake, ice cream, cupcake and also on and so forth are part of a list for us. So the same statement here could have been written join one dot say item one of menu. Now this one is, is not important. The point is that these items really are coming from a list. And I can index into that list before I do this join apple banana. Now we are going to do exactly this, but you might recall that in Python, in fact, the syntax is easier because this join apple banana can be just done using a plus sign. However, it's extremely important that we make sure that all our operands are 
strings because when I have numbers and I'm using plus, it becomes an addition. And we have seen this before. Uh, you know, when we did, for example, count vowel, we did plus, plus, plus because they were all integers and we added, we got a sum. However, when we did, for example, in the secret messages, when we did, uh, let's say, for instance, we did, uh, you know, S equals to S plus space. We did a join apple banana because S in this case was a string. Now we are going to do something similar. So first let's solve this problem and then we'll see how the other two will automatically or sort of kind of along the way they'll get solved, right? So coming back to my project here, remember my goal right now is to get something like join, sorry, something one dot milkshake and I'm going to do an equivalent of, let's say, uh, the join apple banana. So what I could do is that I could say something like this, one plus say this string plus say milkshake. Now if I did this, I'm going to get one dot milkshake exactly how I wanted. Um, on the other hand, let's say I did one plus, le let's say, you know, um, say ice cream, then I'm going to get something like one dot ice cream. Of course, I will want to do two dot ice cream because, uh, you know, I want to display one for milkshake, two for ice cream, three for chocolate and so on and so forth. So I'm going to get two dot ice cream. In fact, I can create a small space as well if I wanted to, but here it's fine. Now, as we also saw, milkshake, ice cream, chocolate, all of this are part of this list called menu. So I can, in fact, instead of writing milkshake over here, I can write, for example, I can write something like one plus this dot plus menu zero. Now, remember, I'm here, I am doing this. The moment I'm doing this, I'm indexing into the, into the list uh, menu. I'm looking at the zeroth item of that, which is a string. So I've got three strings here and I'm doing a plus. So I'm going to get one dot milkshake. Now, in fact, this is the sort of backbone of what we are going to do. So I'm going to just start, you know, uh, uh, let's say, uh, start writing this code together. In effect, I need something like this, right? I need five statements, which do say something like, uh, you know, so I'm going to say print, uh, for example, one plus, Actually, I'm going to say menu say zero print say two plus dot say plus menu say one and so on. So I can just copy this now. So in control V, I, I'm going to say need print three and menu two say print say for example print four and menu three uh, print i'm going to just write one more here print say five plus dot plus menu say four now let's just see this working uh, be careful on these brackets you know the outer bracket has to be a circle bracket here uh, and i must not have this thing extra this is an extra bracket here right so that's causing problem but other than that notice that this is quite well aligned uh, you know, if I were to do this, let's just say I did this, see what happens. If I run this program, I'm going to get one dot milkshake, two dot ice cream, three dot chocolate, four dot eclairs, five dot cupcake. Now, clearly this is becoming a repetitive pattern because I am repeating something exactly five times and I am indexing every element of this list menu. You can see clear use case coming up for a counter variable, a variable uh, along with the repeat statement, which means basically a for loop, right? That means that I can build this entire thing, just this little thing with a for loop, but there's a certain challenge that I must encounter. So what I can do, for example, is that I can say for, say, kk in range, len of, say, menu. Now, what does len of menu mean? Len of menu, just like for a string, is length of this list menu. But now, of course, I must indent this. Now, let's say I just did because I don't need to have five statements anymore because my loop is going to take care of that. The, the for loop is going to take care of that. This kk value is going to increment. So I can just say join say one plus dot, dot plus kk. But if I did this, I'm going to get basically I'm going to get one dot milkshake, one dot ice cream, one dot chocolate, one dot eclairs, one dot cupcake, which is obviously not what I want. So I would be quite tempted to say, okay, look, I'm going to say, say kk plus one and why kk plus one because 
remember kk itself goes from 0 1 2 3 4 but i want to display 1 2 3 4 5 however if i were to do this i am bound to get an error because what's happening here is that unlike in scratch right now we have a little bit more serious problem we have confused the interpreter we have not done this properly by mixing the fact that we have a plus operator plus here but here we have an integer so remember now plus means for integers it means addition for strings it means concatenation or join apple banana but now we have put a string along with an integer and hence the the interpreter is completely confused it doesn't know what to do it doesn't know whether to treat it as a plus like an addition or like a concatenation how do i solve this problem well it's in fact very very simple all i have to do is to really just convert this into a string and i can do that by saying str now what's going to happen is that if i did this in fact it's quite fascinating i'm going to get one dot milkshake two dot ice cream three dot chocolate four dot eclairs five dot cupcake and this worked because remember the basics of all loop it's a repeat with variable which increments now this variable is incrementing from zero till four which is why we could directly use it to address but when it came to putting this number we just added because this was zero we wanted one so we added it to one and we converted this to string so that i do not get any error however remember this is just part of the story i want to print more than just this uh, what I really want to do is that I want to print along with this also the price. Now that part is not hard because again we have seen previously that lists are perfectly synchronized. So if I let's say were to also give this say price kk not prince I don't know why I keep doing this prince kk say price kk. If I did this you know and I'm doing this uh, you know print statements in a loop then I'm going to get something like milkshake, ice cream, chocolate, eclairs and cupcake. Remember previously we had made them all equal length so we just get a nice space in between. I'm not provided any set right now. So I get this nice space in between. They all look nice. Uh, but I could make this a little bit better by adding a few tabs. But here the important point before I go there, notice we are making use of the fact that the links, the lists are completely in sync which means that as this variable kk increments through the loop, it does, it first prints one dot menu zero, price zero. 2 dot menu uh, 1 price 1 3 dot menu 2 price 2 and that's why i'm seeing this now to just to make this a little bit more you know beautiful let's say i'm going to give it a separator of say two tabs now again there's no compulsion that you must give two tabs look at your aesthetics of your uh, you know uh, project this kind of length that you have of the uh, you know for the different let's say items and so on and so forth but with you know you get the idea that by controlling step i get a better you know uh, visual appearance of this it's kind of easy for me to see now however for helping my user i can also you know uh, basically i can give a print statement up front here to tell my users that okay this is what i have in the store so i can just say print for example say item uh, comma let's say price and you know i'm going to use inr but you can use any currency if you want to do uh, price inr say excluding tax and again i'm going to just you know uh, give it uh, let's say uh, in this case I'll, I'll try it you know and this is something you may have to do a little bit of hit and trial so i'm going to just try this with say three tabs uh, because the item is quite small so you know i mean that the, the word item is small compared to what i get here i think with three tabs it should kind of just align nicely and it in fact does now this is not to be memorized this is not to be you know uh, taken as a golden rule that i must have three tabs or i must have two tabs this is something we have to experiment but the important bit here is how we have used a for loop this variable conversion to a string and the fact that we are just indexing this list and notice that we have got a pretty nice display up here um, which our game can now proceed on uh, building on top of this i hope this was clear uh, i'll be happy to hear your feedback and comments Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.